Welcome CyberMDs to another cardiology lecture for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Today's lecture will cover pathologies of the aorta. We will discuss several conditions related to the aorta including aortic dissection, thoracic aneurysm, abdominal aortic aneurysm or AAA, and traumatic aortic transection. Before we get started, please remember to like, comment, and or subscribe if you find the content here useful in any way so that we can continue to provide free medical education resources for students around the world. Additionally, please tell your friends about our content and let us know if you think that we can improve the lectures in any way at all. Now, let's dive into the lecture. First, before we go too far, let's review the layers of the aortic wall. The aorta consists of three layers, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. The intima is the innermost layer and provides a smooth surface for blood flow. The media is the middle layer and allows expansion and contraction of the artery and contains smooth muscle. Finally, the adventitia is the outermost layer, providing support and structure. When considering the aortic pathologies, I want you to remember that the aorta is a relatively sturdy and well-protected structure. Therefore, to cause injury, you must either use a lot of force or you must weaken the walls of the aorta in some way. Let's discuss our first pathology, aortic dissection. Aortic dissection occurs when there is a tear through the intima as the blood dissects into the media of the aortic wall. When this does occur, it is often within the first 10 centimeters of the aorta as this particular region of the aorta incurs large amounts of stress, it's holding the highest blood pressures. The most common cause of aortic dissection is hypertension. Again, the most common cause of aortic dissection is hypertension. And this is a condition that typically occurs in older adults. Now, remember that this discussion is centered around strong forces or weakening of the aorta. Therefore, Aortic dissection can also be associated with genetic disorders that cause defects of connective tissue, which inevitably will weaken the walls of the aorta. If you see an aortic dissection in a younger patient, it is possible that they have a weakened aortic wall due to one of these defects as these defects can cause quote unquote cystic medial necrosis. This includes conditions such as Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So again, putting all of that together, Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome are inherited defects of connective tissue that cause cystic medial necrosis, thereby weakening the aortic wall and increasing the risk for aortic dissection. Hypertension leads to a weakened aortic wall as well, although through a different mechanism. If you recall from previous lectures, hypertension may cause hyaline arteriolosclerosis. It can cause hyaline arteriolosclerosis of the vasophosorum. The vasophosorum literally means vessels of vessels, and it is the collection of blood vessels that supplies blood and nutrients to the cells that make up the walls of the aorta. However, hyaline arteriolosclerosis due to hypertension will result in decreased blood flow and subsequently in atrophy of the medial layer of the aorta. Clinically, aortic dissection classically is going to present with a sharp, tearing chest pain that radiates to the back. Typically, in aortic dissection, excruciating uh, precordial, so the front of your chest, or interscapular in between uh, your scapula on your back, uh, those are the two places that they may uh, endorse pain uh, whenever you are asking these patients about what's going on. Uh, again, they're often going to describe the pain as like a tearing or a ripping, and it's going to occur abruptly, a very quick onset of this pain. Again, the pain frequently migrates from the original location, which is typically in the chest, uh, and it's, it can radiate to the patient's back. They may pass out, uh, also known as syncope, uh, due to the pain or sudden changes in blood pressure. Another exam finding that can clue you in to a diagnosis of dissection is a difference in blood pressures between the arms, as the dissection may interfere with a major vascular supply to one arm, but not the other. If the dissection extends towards the heart, it may cause aortic regurgitation or cardiac tamponade. 
Other complications include death secondary to hemorrhage and organ ex, uh, organ ischemia, pleural effusions, stroke, and myocardial infarctions. Oftentimes, these patients will receive a chest x-ray, and a classic finding associated with dissection or traumatic rupture is mediastinal widening, which you will actually see on the next slide. The diagnosis is typically confirmed with transesophageal echocardiography, or TEE, CT angiography, or CTA, or magnetic resonance angiography, also known as MRA. Uh, and the management of the condition often involves beta blockers for blood pressure control and then subsequent surgery to repair the aorta. Moving on to our next pathology, thoracic aneurysm. Thoracic aneurysm refers to a dilation of the thoracic aorta. Much like an aortic dissection, this condition is typically secondary to a weakening of the aortic wall. The classic step one association with weakening of the thoracic aorta is tertiary syphilis. Similar to hypertension in aortic dissection, tertiary syphilis infection causes endarditis or inflammation of the inner lining of the vasovasorum and the thoracic aorta. This causes a narrowed lumen in the vasovasorum with subsequent reduction in blood flow and thus atrophy of the wall of the thoracic aorta. The classic description on gross autopsy of a patient with this is a quote-unquote tree bark appearance. It's very unlikely that the test writers will be nice enough to give you those buzzwords, but it's something you should be familiar with. To help you remember this, remember the T's of thoracic aortic aneurysm. T for, th for thoracic, T for tertiary syphilis, and T for the tree bark appearance. Patients with a thoracic aortic aneurysm will typically be asymptomatic until some sort of complication arises, so some sort of like serious complication. When this happens, they can present with chest pain secondary to a dissection. They may have hemoptysis, which is coughing up blood, or pneumonitis due to erosion into the lungs from the long-standing inflammation. They can have stroke or a mesenteric ischemia or any kind of distal extremity pain, and all of those would be secondary to a thromboembolism. Uh, additionally, they can have a Horner syndrome due to local compression of the sympathetic ganglia. These patients can also die rather rapidly in the event of an aortic rupture as a complication of the thoracic aneurysm. A thoracic aortic aneurysm can occur in three places, really. They are the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the descending aorta in the thoracic cavity. This is important as the location is related to the more common complications of the condition. Most of the complications occur when the aneurysm is a part of the aortic arch. When this occurs, dilation of the aortic root can cause insufficiency of the aortic valve, which causes regurgitation. Additionally, it can cause ischemia by occluding coronary arteries and may occlude or obstruct other mediastinal structures. Other general complications, uh, no matter the location, include embolism, rupture, and dissection. For these patients, beta blockers are often used to control blood pressure, and the definitive treatment is typically going to be some kind of surgical repair. All right, let's move along to abdominal aortic aneurysm, also known as AAA. AAA is also characterized by dilation of the aorta, only now we are talking about the aorta in the abdomen. Typically, these aneurysms are going to occur below the renal arteries, but above the aortic bifurcation. Again, typically these occur below the renal arteries, but above the aortic bifurcation. With regards to strong force versus aortic weakening, this is another example of weakening of the aorta. The number one cause of AAA is atherosclerosis. And this is a condition that is most commonly seen in male smokers who are greater than 60 years old. Now, oftentimes they happen to have hypertension, but smoking is the number one risk factor for AAA. In AAA, atherosclerosis causes an increase in the diffusion barrier for blood and nutrients to get to the media, which subsequently, as we've been talking about, causes atrophy and, of course, weakening of the vessel wall. To help you remember all of this, remember the three A's of AAA. The first A is for androgens, so this is going to occur in males. 
The second A is for age, so older than 60. And the third A is atherosclerosis. And then think about that being due to smoking. Just don't forget that there is no H in AAA. So hypertension is not the number one risk factor. Smoking is the number one risk factor. Patients with AAA are generally asymptomatic. However, know that compression of structures adjacent to the aneurysm, such as a ureter, can cause or can occur and may cause these patients to present with vague abdominal pain. These patients may also present with a pulsatile abdominal mass that can grow with time. The major complication of AAA is going to be if it ruptures, especially when the diameter exceeds 5 centimeters. Those patients are at a pretty great risk for AAA rupture, and they can cause embolization as well. Rupture classically presents with a triad of hypotension, a pulsatile abdominal mass, and flank pain. The diagnosis of AAA may be incidental, but may also be found on abdominal ultrasound or a CT scan of the abdomen and or pelvis. Some angiographic scans may also confirm this diagnosis. Ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysms require immediate open surgery or endovascular stent and grafting. Without treatment, mortality rate very quickly approaches 100% as the patient tends to bleed out. There are other guidelines associated with elective repair of AAAs, but this is beyond the scope of step one. Let's move on to the final condition that we'll be discussing in this lecture, traumatic aortic transection, also known as aortic rupture. So far in this lecture, we've covered some high yield topics related to weakening of the aorta. Uh, on a different note, traumatic aortic transection occurs due to a near complete tear through all the layers of the aorta usually as a result of a very high force trauma, such as a motor vehicle collision or a fall that causes a shearing of the aorta wall. These forces are typically uh, forces of like acceleration and deceleration. So a motor vehicle collision where the car is going really fast and then stops really suddenly or a fall where the patient themselves has accelerated to a high speed and then stops when they hit the ground. Uh, so these typically have acceleration deceleration components. Uh, additionally, in gunshot wounds uh, or other penetrating injuries where the penetrating object, such as a bullet, travels across the mediastinum or the midline of the body in the retroperitoneum, or if it's a penetrating object that penetrates into the mediastinum, the aorta may be ruptured there as well. These patients may have severe chest or abdominal pain as well as rib fractures. They may have signs of reduced blood flow to the extremities, also known as pulse deficits. Chest x-ray can have findings suggestive of traumatic aortic transection. On a chest x-ray, you may see a widened mediastinum. You may see those rib fractures or tracheal deviation. Uh, these patients can actually have hemothorax and pneumothorax, and they can have pulmonary contusions as well. You can see a traumatic aortic transection on transesophageal echo as well. However, you will need to confirm the diagnosis with some sort of imaging, such as angiography or aortography, and the treatment for these patients will be blood pressure control, uh, so usually beta blockers, and these patients, they need surgical repair. Uh, they will often bleed out very quickly. Uh, because they can bleed out so quickly, the major complication of this uh, particular pathology is death. However, if they have signs of anterior chest wall trauma, uh, they may have a myocardial contusion, which can lead to cardiac conduction abnormalities and ventricular arrhythmias as the right ventricle sits very close to the anterior chest wall. In summary, today we discussed several pathologies of the aorta. Uh, aortic dissection involves an intimal tear with dissection of blood through the media. It's commonly associated with hypertension and connective tissue disorders. Thoracic aneurysm is characterized by a dilation of the thoracic aorta, often seen in tertiary syphilis. Remember your T's. AAA, abdominal aortic aneurysm, is a dilation of the abdominal aorta, primarily caused by atherosclerosis with smoking as the leading risk factor. Uh, lastly, traumatic aortic transection refers to a near-complete tear through all the layers of the aorta due to trauma. 
Uh, understanding these pathologies and their clinical presentations is essential for your prep for step one. Be sure to compare and contrast these conditions in your studies as they will be compared and contrasted on your exam. Again, please remember to like, comment, and or subscribe if you find the content here useful in any way so that we can continue to provide free medical educa education resources for students around the world. Additionally, please tell your friends about our content and let us know if you think that we can improve the lectures in any way at all. Thanks for tuning in.